I'm really excited to get the chance to talk to you guys this morning. Uh, turn to First Peter, if you will. That's where I'm going to start this morning. First Peter chapter 1. You know, Mr. Wilson told me yesterday I could pick any topic that I wanted. So I love that, of course. Just had to narrow it down. And uh, I picked this verse, First Peter 1, starting in verse 22. Since you have in obedience to the truth, purified your souls for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not of seed which is perishable, but imperishable. That is through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls off, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word which is preached to you. You know, this verse always puts it in proper perspective for me. Things. Uh, one of the big things about this life is physical life. You're trying to figure out what is worth putting your time and investment in. Okay, I talked to a lot of guys my age, and they're trying to figure out for a career, for their life, what's something that they're going to get a good return for their investment for, right? And this verse reminds me, guys, the best investment that one could make is in the Word of God and in the Lord's church. Okay, I, I remember I was probably about 11 or 12 years old, and Billings McElbury taught that Sunday school class. I learned a lot in those years but one time he was out of town so jeff bisco filled in and uh, he had us watch a video of kent hovind how many of you guys know him yeah you guys are familiar with him not sure if he has everything figured out and salvation straightened out but he has some good stuff i like listening to him and he was giving a class to uh probably 12 to 18 year old kids i'm talking about investments what to do with your money time and uh, he went through there's four kinds Four kinds of investments that you can make. Okay, first one, you can invest in something that will last you a few hours. Okay, food, water, give the physical body sustenance for a bit. You got to do that. That's the first. The second, you can make an investment in things that will last you a couple years. Clothes, shoes, cars. Okay, decent investment. And then you've got things that you can... Invest in that'll last you a lifetime, career, maybe a house. Okay, and then he gets to the end and he says, the best investment are the things that are going to last for eternity. And that's the Lord's kingdom. I want to go to Psalm 145. Psalm 145, starting in verse 8. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in loving kindness. The Lord is good to all, and His mercies are over all His works. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and your godly ones shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and talk of your power, to make known to the sons of men your mighty acts and the glory of the majesty of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. You know, there has been some great kingdoms throughout history. There's been some great organizations. I really, really enjoy sports. I follow sports a lot. And for college football, it's been the University of Alabama. For most of my lifetime, probably about 10 years now, every year, they are either the best team or one of the best teams. They've got a dynasty. New England Patriots, I've been waiting for those guys for forever to finally be mediocre, and they haven't yet. Okay, but eventually, guys, those dynasties are going to fall. The kingdom of the Lord, that's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. You know, what's the kingdom made of, though, guys? What makes up the kingdom of God? Souls. Souls. Go to Romans chapter 1. You know, I, Jay Wilson said earlier while we were singing where the soul never dies. Well, everybody's soul lives. It's just a matter of where, whether you're gonna, where you're going to be living. Hey, you think souls are worth investing in? Those are going to last forever. Romans 1, 
Maybe my, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Guys, we, we have the power to save people's eternal souls right at our fingertips. That's an investment worth making. People's souls. I played soccer for many years, and uh, the game of soccer... As you start to get more advanced, communication is very key, very key. Um, when I was about 12 or 13, we started to get better. The game started to get more complex, and our coach would say, find your voice. Okay, if you see something that your teammate doesn't see, find your voice. Tell him. Okay, well, what about for us as Christians? We have the power for the salvation of everyone who believes right at our fingertips. We need to find our voice. Invest in people's eternities, in the Lord's kingdom. That stuff's not good. That's never going to fade. Last verse, I want to go to Isaiah chapter 55. I'm going to steal from the end of a message that I heard Mr. Wilson speak at Lancaster Family Camp this year, and I will never forget it because I sent goosebumps my body at the end of his message. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. So will my word be, which goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. You know, guys, Jay said in his message, if God had Samuel knowing where the lost goats were, you think he knows where the lost souls are? He knows where the true seekers are at. Okay, what he needs is us to find our voice, to send the word out, and the word will accomplish its work. I want to encourage us and motivate us. Invest in the kingdom. Invest in the Lord's church. Invest in souls. That's going to last, and let's find our voice.